Hello, and welcome to Full Tech Ahead. I'm your host, Amanda Rosani, and I'm excited to be here today with Patrick Saylor. He is the Director of Social Engineering at NetSpy. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well. Can you share a little bit about yourself and what does NetSpy do? Yeah, so uh, like you said, my name is Patrick Saylor. Uh, I'm the Director of Social Engineering, uh, and I've been uh, working for NetSpy since 2016. NetSpy is a penetration testing company, proactive security, offensive security. Uh, so clients come to us and uh, basically we try to find uh, security issues, vulnerabilities in their infrastructure, their people before real threat actors can find them. So we help them find the problems and then they can fix it before something bad happens. <laughs> um, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the evolving threat landscape. Um, social engineering attacks have become incredibly sophisticated recently, um, and it's pretty easy to be tricked. So what are some trends that you're seeing right now, and especially around the AI voice cloning and um, SMS phishing? Yeah, SMS phishing is hugely on the rise. I got and I'm not, I swear I'm not making this up. I got a text message this morning uh, from, you know, someone sending me a phishing link. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to click that. I just woke up. Um, uh, it's just a continuous problem. Um, a lot of toll, like toll road uh, text message phishing as well. That's really been on the rise. AI voice cloning is the, the new big, big hot thing to look out for uh, where, you know, someone can take a clip of your voice, you know, through a podcast like we're recording here, unfortunately, upload it to consumer grade services like Eleven Labs. And all they need is a clip of like 30 seconds at at most. I mean, the more data you give it, the better. But with that such short clip, you can clone someone's voice pretty accurately to play back over the phone. Uh, and then an attacker could call and say, hey, you know, this is. Patrick, I am stuck in prison. Help me, bail me out, mom. And uh, that's that's a whole other uh, kind of campaign that people have been running over the last several years, but it's just more believable now with a real clone voice. Yeah, absolutely. It's honestly very disturbing. And my next question would be, how do business leaders and companies protect against the, this AI deception? I, man, this is such a tough question to answer. The easiest way to stop it is to just not answer your phone, honestly. But don't, don't, don't tell that to the the business people out there, especially the salespeople. Um, I I think the best way to protect against it, if you are in a position to receive phone calls on a regular basis, is uh, follow up through some secondary means. So if I get a phone call from Michelle and she says, "Hey, Patrick, send me an iTunes gift card." Uh, I can send her a Slack message or Teams message or send her an email that is already a, another trusted platform that we use. And I can say, hey, Michelle, did you just call me? Why do you need an iTunes gift card? And then she can say, that wasn't me. Hang up. Block the number. I think the general consensus most people should have now is if you get a text message asking for gift cards, you should <laughs> right away know that that is a scam. Exactly. I mean... I'm an Android guy, so I'm not going to buy an iPhone gift card anyway. But. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so even with advanced technology, people remain the weakest link. And so what are some of the most common human actions or blind spots that threat actors try to exploit? Uh, I think over the phone is is the biggest blind spot for both people and organizations because email phishing, there are so many protections out there. There's email filters, there's all sorts of different services and, and toolkits that can analyze the content, you know, inspect links and say, hey, this looks like a phishing message or this website you're about to click looks like it has a fake login page. But for phone calls, that just does not exist. Uh, it's very hard for a company to go back and, or like analyze calls in real time to determine if it's a real voice or, or I mean, it's a real voice, but if it's a real person or not. Uh, and most of the uh, defensive actions there would be after the fact. So 
you would have to wait for the call to end and then someone on the security team could go back listen to the recording and really suss out oh that was that was not legit so phone calls are probably the the area that i focus on that's it's my personal favorite too honestly when yeah. i'm when i'm on these engagements So NetSpy works with some of the biggest global enterprises. From your perspective, what does a proactive social engineering defense look like for 2025 and the future? Uh, I think continual training, continual, uh, continual, continuous uh, phishing campaigns and exercises internally. Uh, just let people know what's out there. Uh, a lot of times when I call into a company, they've just never received this type of phone call like they just their default is to trust who's on the other end because maybe they don't normally receive calls uh or they just you know it is they're in a position to help people so um like when you're calling a help desk or customer support it is their job to help the caller with their issue and they they want to do their job they want to get off the phone they want to keep their metrics up and and move about their day but um You know, that obviously benefits the attacker who is trying to trick the person. So um, yeah. just warning people what's out there and then building, uh, I, I think everyone says this, but just building this kind of internal culture around, yeah, it's it's okay, these things happen. Just let us know when it does happen. Don't try to hide it after the fact. Don't uh, click a link and then ignore it. If you click a link, definitely let someone know because if, if you don't, it could blow up to something. Yeah, communication is key. Mm -hmm. So this technology is advancing quite rapidly and, you know, there's all sorts of other technologies to be concerned about. So uh, looking toward the future, what do you think is going to be some of the risks that business leaders need to look for? I think still the voice cloning risk is the biggest one, uh, even outside of like targeting employee credentials and employee accounts. Uh, I've seen a lot of stories about wire transfer fraud and just, you know, financial fraud using this. And that's, um, you know, it's one thing to get total administrative access over a company, but uh, it's a lot more impactful to a company to see, yeah, we lost X million dollars from the specific thing. Tying a dollar amount to it is is like the the real way to show what's actually happening. I've heard some horror stories lately about um, deep fakes that are in real time where somebody literally thought they were talking to a real person. They were looking and listening to a real person via um, a meeting. And so they carried out some actions um, that were requested. And then that person was on vacation somewhere. And so it couldn't have been. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? And uh, that's really scary. I mean, how can we protect ourselves against something so real? looking yeah and whenever this topic comes up uh i always think back to a specific uh engagement that i ran earlier this year for a client uh but uh, these attacks have happened forever you know attackers and burglars have always impersonated a trusted individual and trying to trick someone it's just becoming easier and easier for them so i wouldn't say the tactics are new it's just lowering the barrier to entry for someone to do it. Um, for example, the, the engagement I mentioned, uh, my goal was to call into a customer's help desk and reset a specific doctor's password. Now this client, uh, the company, their help desk used multi, multi-factor before someone could call in. So you'd call and then you would have to get on video chat and you'd have to hold up your government ID or your employee badge and you know, do a whole like teams meeting with them. Well, I did all of that. Uh, and I didn't use deep fakes. I didn't use voice cloning. I literally actually have it here. I bought this $10 uh, lab coat from Amazon, uh, put on an N95 medical mask and found the person's LinkedIn photo and taped it to a fake badge card. And that was enough for them to do it. So wow, very low tech nothing special about it um it it still worked i got in it did a lot of stuff <laughs> that's all i can say wow so at the end of the day the the human social manipulation factor is the biggest one exactly yeah 
All right. Well, if you have one key takeaway you can leave our audience with today, what would that be? <laughs> like I said, don't answer the phone. Don't talk to people. There's nothing wrong with just hanging up. Um, I'm a very antisocial person, so I just let it go to voicemail. I prefer text messages. <laughs> it's, you you can't trick someone if they don't respond to it. So All right. that's my You takeaway. heard that. <laughs> Be careful out there and stay safe and listen to these tips. Uh, thank you so much, Patrick, for coming on the show and sharing your insights. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. And thank you to our listeners. Stay tuned. There's more.